So once again, I, I'm uh, very pleased to be able to introduce uh, our next session, which is titled Dream Grid Op uh, Open Simulator, a simple to use Windows compatible Open Sim front end. And our speaker today is uh, Fred Beckhusen. Uh, and uh, Fred is the president of Micro Technology Services, uh, a micro design firm in its 30th year, and he runs the very popular, uh, and Fred is a, as an absolute hero of mine, as I'm sure he's a hero of everyone else here. Uh, he runs the website www.outwards.com uh, with thousands of free 3D models and LSL scripts, which we are eternally grateful to him for. So without further ado, Fred, over to you. Well, hello, everybody. Um, two years ago, I Andresta sent out a version of Dream World, which is a standalone version of OpenSim that was made easier to install and run. Uh, about a year ago, I introduced a new Dream Grid beta here at uh, OSC's 2017. So I'm going to show you a few of the features of Dream World and Dream Grid today and then talk a little bit about the future uh, of the world. Um, so Dream World's goal was to, as a standalone grid, was to make it easy for people to uh, run OpenSim. It's not easy, you know, you got to edit a bunch of INI files. Um, it's basically a kit of parts and people modify it with PHP and Apache and lots of custom code. Well, I try not to avoid, I try to avoid all that. I just basically OpenSim, stock OpenSim core code. Uh, I use standard.net as a wrapper, manipulate the heck out of it, and then launch it and start it and stop it without changing anything. So it does a lot of different things for you. Um, it, you know, edits about 250 different INI settings on startup. It's roughly 22,000 lines of code, which pales in the size of Open Simulator. But, you know, it's, um, it's all .NET, it's all Microsoft, and it's all open source. The other thing about it is it's... Um, it's a dream grid now, has a bunch of other new features in it as well. So it's compared to standalone, it's robust, meaning it has lots and lots of different um, DOS boxes that it can run in. You can boot it in multiple regions. You can take up a region. You can shut it down, stop them individually. It's also more integrated between OpenSim and the dream grid control panel with two-way pass. Again, no code's been changed in core OpenSim. It just uses existing methods like HTTP, the region modules, and all the other ways that the OpenSim core developer has done all of these years. So it comes with a, a bunch of other core modules as well as the new modules that I've added and DreamGrid itself. So the pre-configured core modules are things like, you know, voice, um, IM, the flotsam cache, so I've also dug through the code a lot and tried to add uh, the things that aren't commonly done. Things like the OSL functions are set up in a sane manner uh, so that they'll work for most things like Anya Kiva's uh, dance ball, NPCs and such. Um, safe modes, but you know a little less strict than the ones that come with core. Also, I include the auto backup module. Uh, I've turned on region data snapshots, prim limits, region ready modules, and a couple of lesser known ones, such as the sun settings where you can control your own sun and also use the old fashioned particle clouds. And I'll show some of these on the, the next couple of slides as well. So there's a lot of third party modules as well that I found. Um, for example, partnering. Partnering is a simple prim. Uh, you upload it with DreamGrid, res it on the ground. It's just a cube. And if you can convince a girl or a guy to click the cube in the same 30 seconds, ta-da, and you're married. And remember, I get pick of the litter. So if you just upload the prim, you're ready to go. It then partners you in the viewer. So you can get married or you can just have a long-term partner. Um, there's also... <clears throat> A uh, built-in IceCast server, uh, Globits as well. The IceCast runs in a standalone mode. It's stock open code. Anybody can extract it out of there and use it. My, all my code's open source, so please feel to take it apart and redo it however you want to do it. The streaming also works in Second Life or as a general um, uh, standalone streamer as well. And there's a lot of other things that happen that are caused by the fact that they're kind of tied together through the Outworlds and the Hyperica simulation as well. And by that I mean, um, you've got some in-viewer effects, like you have a, a hypergrid um, 
what's the word for it? Destination Guide, which are all the major popular grids. I got this from Maria Korlov. I bought her website, Hyperica, and I've been modernizing it some. Uh, it automatically has a list of all of the known grids. Uh, there's about 650 of them now, unlike her statistics claim. Uh, it automatically updates those and shows who's online and who's not. It has a web crawler that crawls the world and will update this stuff. Plus, there's a hypeevents.net, which is a website that you'll see prims from Hyperica scattered all over the world that lets you see things like um, uh, all the grid-wide events across all the grids. And it's in viewer at this stage, which is kind of – there's about 25 um, things like that, um, different grid calendars. And you can add to it as well if you go to hypeevents.net. Uh, there's going to be a lot more of this in the near future as well. So anybody can enable some of these effects on their grid as well. So if you want to, come meet me after the show and I'll explain how that works. Now, there's also some stuff, um, third-party modules I found and I'm working on and updating. They are the bird module, the um, uh, a what's the word? A tide module, which is kind of cool. It makes the tides go up and down. The birds fly in flocks. Works great on things like this Lonely Island uh, sim that you have as a free ore. And then DigiWorlds and several other people have contributed code. Thank you very much. And I put that together with Outworlds to create an auto-updating teleport sign. So all you have to do is go into the region panel, click on a region, and then res this prim. It's part of Dream Grid, and it automatically updates with a teleportable link to all the regions that are online. If your region is shut down, it removes it from the sign. You bring the regions on. It'll handle up to 32 such regions at a time. So that's part of the just extending web servers core functions but externally with my own HTTP servers and such. So there are other differences that are more important than just things like, you know, signs and so on. But hey there, Jack Daniels. Thank you very much for the bird module and some of the other modules you've done. I see you in chat there. Uh, you did a great job. I'm still tweaking it. You need to take a look at some of my pull requests. <laughs> so there's more stuff out there as well. One of them is I'm able to make the dreaded editing of INI files almost entirely go away. So this is the main reason I like it. You can see here there's a lot of different features. You can add a region, delete a region, stop, start, restart. You can see how many users are in a region. It supports currently 200 regions, which sounds like a lot. Um, there are people, though, who run well in excess of 150 different regions on a machine with 32 gigs of RAM and a simple i7 or an i5. It's not, it's not scripts or prim count so much. Um, but really the number of avatars and the amount of RAM you have. If you have a lot of bad scripts, one region will shut it down. If you have good scripts, you can run 100 sims. It's nothing really to stop you. Um, also, um, on the right-hand side, you can see a sortable list of regions by clicking and controlling them. Uh, there's different views. You can even see the maps uh, that are in-world with the, uh, this particular package. So, for example, if you click a region, it'll start and stop it. If you, um, if you turn around and disable a region, then you can edit it. And up pops this big region control panel. Let me explain this briefly while I still have a few minutes of time. What this does in the upper left is all you need is a name, the size, and hit save. Then you can enable it here or enable it back in that control panel, then click start and it will boot up your new region. Then you can load it with content, then you can shut it down. There's no reason for you now to load ores all the time and swap them around. You can have 300 regions, you just turn the few on that will fit in your 8 gigs of RAM or your 16 gigs of RAM or whatever you've got. So you can bring them up and down on demand. The second area below that, that's in the advanced area, is um, stuff that has to be put in there. I just filled it in for you. You won't get region conflicts anymore and you won't get port conflicts. Dream Grid handles that for you and makes your new grid and places it somewhere. It won't bump into something and it picks the next available port. No more port management. It just starts with one and adds up. In the lower left are things that are frequently left out of open sim situations like a max prims, uh, clamping prim size and so on. I always add those as well. On the right though is the stuff that Dream Grid adds to the region.ini. Now, it doesn't affect core OpenSim at all. OpenSim ignores all these settings I add to the region itself. Uh, it allows you to, um, it allows me to manipulate the other INI files to make this work. So the external code that I have, let's see, up in the upper left, you'll see what's required. Of course, you just need a name and a size. You hit save, the rest of this gets filled in all the way down and all the way across. 
On the right hand side, properties that are blank are ignored, but if Dream Grid, if you click the box or set the physics for that, for example, you can run ODE in one sim and you can run oh, Bullet in a different one because you have vehicles for that or no physics still in another. You can put maps on, maps off, and so on and so on. Birds in this module, auto teleports are off in this one so people can't find it. And that doesn't make any changes to core, but DreamGrid interprets it and then manipulates the OpenSim.ini's and other things that it copies around. Another thing that's interesting here is it's all done with only a single directory by building on core OpenSim principles as well. Um, so it all sounds really good, but let's hope it works. So it should work out of the box. Sadly, it doesn't always. Now, it should always boot up and run on Windows, assuming you have at least 8 gigs of RAM. I wouldn't try it on 4, though. I've seen people actually get up with a viewer on the hypergrid and 4 gigs of RAM on a Windows 10 box. It's a little slow, but it does boot. Um, what the system will do is try and boot you up, get you online. Uh, it diagnoses a lot of different things. It comes with universal plug and play, which is in the upper right hand corner. You got to get on the cloud. You got to get outside. So it tries to set up a dynamic DNS system automatically for you. You just pick a name and it works. Uh, you don't have to log in, no passwords or anything like that needed. Then it tries to diagnose your cable modem or your router, or your DSL or your work router or whatever, and tells you what is wrong and tries to fix it with UPnP. It comes with two different UMP programs to try and hand manipulate it or auto manipulate it. So it tries to fix your router ports. If it can't, it'll take you to a help page that tells you how to open and forward the ports. Uh, the second thing it does is it diagnoses the open sim itself. It'll check 127.0.0.1 slash blah, blah, blah to see that it's working. It'll try and open your firewalls. It will do a lot of work. And eventually, if all else fails, it'll set you up to work on your local area network, like in a school, for example. Also, for school use, you can just simply turn the hypergrid off and maintain your privacy and your safety and your security. So it also works down and tries to uh, just set up MySQL for you and do all these things. So you just click start and you're done and you're online. So there's a lot of different things it does, obviously. Um, I've tried to work on help a lot um, so that you can just use the link. Well, for example, some people who are new to this, one lady's running 70 sims. One of my, I call them kitchen ladies who runs this. She's running 70 sims. She has a nice little small server. Um, she didn't know how to link two prims together and she's running a grid with 70 different regions and over 100 people are logged into it. And that's only within just a couple of months. So it's rather amazing to see people be able to suddenly become a grid master with a few clicks of a mouse. Now, there's a stiff learning curve, of course. But thankfully, Diva Canto has given us her, her ad Wi-Fi admin page. We now have IceCast, so you can broadcast. Uh, we automatically set up things, much like Sim on a Stick did. So um, it's got a lot of nice little features like that. Uh, and it's frankly, it's not just me. It's people like Diva and Blue Wall and other people who have put together some really nice stuff. So we've built a pretty good sized community over here on um, Google Plus, on Facebook, MeWe now, of course. People contact me with Facebook Messenger, Skype. They go to the Outworld site. You can get my phone number from me easily. You can email me. I'll be happy to support you all I can. I frequently do go to meetings with people all the time to try and get their sims going because frankly, opening up ports and forwarding them and mutzing with, you know, firewalls and antivirus is really not very easy. Um, so thank you all. Um, a couple of other things we've done is that I'm running and run out of time here. So let me move on. We now have approximately 108, not six, open source ORs that people have contributed. This is something OpenSim doesn't talk about nuts. We have massive amounts of DLC, downloadable content. There's 66 open source IARs. We have local ones, backup ones. You can do it with a menu because the commands, quite frankly, are complicated. It's much easier to just drag an OR or an IAR and drop it on the wallpaper and it'll prompt you through everything you need to know. And it should be a lot easier. Now, earlier today, Maria mentioned some stats, and those stats are maybe a little off. She counts things differently than I do. I count via the dynamic DNS people who actually managed to get online. Uh, yes, the answer is somebody just said you can run this on a thumb drive. It, it runs out of a single folder and doesn't do anything to your PC. You can move that folder elsewhere and it will run just as well. Um, so everything's contained. Now, there's about 660 dream grids or dream worlds totally were online on the hypergrid in November. Um, 
usually there's only about 50 or 60 of them online at a time. They tend to be part-timers. They're on for a few hours. They shut them down and move off. There's been almost 1,700 of them online in the last quarter, uh, which is kind of amazing when you consider there's roughly 220 or so, I think it is today, other grids out there. So it's uh, really very quite popular. Um, so let me mention a couple of things I'm working on next. Um, this is uh, highly speculative, but I promised I would talk about that. So the first thing I want to talk about is the destination guide that everybody has at Hyperica. You can put a pointer to it in your open sim and have this long destination guide. I'm trying to make that automatically update a little bit when your dream grid is online, if you choose it to be there. Uh, I just discovered the concierge module. So the core developers, if anybody's out there listening to this, doesn't see one that I've, that's good that you know about and you think ought to be in there, I just discovered the concierge module. I'm going to be adding it. That allows you to IM people in world when they come and go. Um, I've got themes coming for Diva's Wi-Fi panels. So you can switch between black and white and white and black. I've got a white theme up on one grid. I just got to do a little bit more automation. There's a couple of broken things in Diva I keep running into. The female avatar, default mod avatar works, but the neutral and the male don't seem to, so I've broken something there. I'd like to add toss for the full grids. Uh, that works fine in standalone, but the code's not there for, for full grid. I want to add that. Um, classifieds are actually working, but I don't have any classifieds to post yet. Uh, this green grid wide search is up and running. That's Diva's uh, data snapshot module. There's um, tab docs boxes. And the one thing I really want to do, which is to make it auto boot up and auto stop and suspend sims. So that's uh, about it. Uh, I would like to mention a couple of thank yous uh, to people like Diva and Blue and uh, Ubit in particular who for helping me. And I'd also like to thank Avia Bond for her graphics and Debbie Edwards without who all of this, it simply would not have been possible. So thank you very much. Um, I'm also, I'm going to be over at OSCC Expo Zone 3 in booth number 23. It's just go down the steps to the right. I'm next to the core devs. I'll be there to answer any questions for a while. And if you've got some questions for me, um, have them at it. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, can any of your updated module work be integrated back to those of us running grids not using Dream Worlds? All of the modules are available from the original sources. They're in this slide. And the slides, by the way, and this presentation are online at this URL hill, uh, www.outworlds.com. And if you can uh, see this, it'd be slash second life slash OSCC. It's also on the tools page. And thank you very much, everybody. Um, any more questions from anybody? Yeah, so back over to the audience. Is there any other any other questions that you'd like to ask? Third, third I'd like to ask one, uh, maybe uh, <laughs> a little bit out of technical ignorance, but uh, our university, we're working on a um, an e-exam system that runs off a USB stick, and the operating system is Linux, and we have everything contained within that. USB stick environment, which basically turns the students' laptops into dumb terminals so that there's no prospect of them cheating and so on. One of the things that we'd love to do is be able to integrate um, OpenSIM into that sort of environment for, for example, you know, a high stakes exam at the end of the semester. Um, we, we, again, I'm speaking, asking this out of huge technical ignorance. Is there any possibility that your system could run in that kind of environment? Normally, no, not in a Linux environment. It runs just fine in a Windows environment on a sim on a stick. Um, you can preset it up so, for example, it can't get on the hypergrid. Um, it's actually 100% open sim. Once you've started it once, it'll have set up all the modules. So if you needed birds or tides, you could run it. Uh, you could probably even just copy all the settings then over to a Linux machine. It does not, it should run on Linux, sort of. Uh, it uses Windows forms, and therefore it probably won't run or compile under Mono, though in the future, as Mono gets more and more uh, closer to .NET, um, and it does support some Windows forms now, I understand, it might be possible to actually port it to Linux or even a Mac, but right now I don't have any plans to do that. I've got plans for doing other things. Right, okay. Might have to have another chat to you sometime in the near future. <laughs> sure. One of the things you can you do is the start it once and then exit it, and then you just have OpenSim, Robust, MySQL all running just like you'd started it all by hand. It even comes with batch files to let you run it by hand. So many people do that. They start it once, set it up, and then they go create their own automation programs. 
Yes, it works fine in VirtualBox on Linux. I did one on a Mac just a few days ago. You just put it into bridged mode. You don't even have to open any ports unless you, on your, your router, has to, of course, forward it to the correct IP and your VirtualBox IP. And it works just fine in a virtual box in, um, well, Unix, which is running on Macs. It should just run fine under Linux as well. Um, it works fine with groups. The Diva supports groups. It's um, got instant messenger groups. Uh, well, there's a list of them in the presentation. If you go scroll back to that, you'll see all the core modules run. Okay, any more questions? And we'll wrap it up. Got time for one more. If not, meet me over at OSCC Expo Zone 3 in number 27. And uh, like I said, this was the uh, Outworld's Dream Grid presentation for um, Windows. Okay, well, if there's, there's no further questions, i um, love to take the opportunity to once again thanks uh, Fred slash Ferd uh, for, in some ways, what is an overwhelming <laughs> Presentation here, Ferd always gives a huge amount, uh, and we're, we're very grateful for uh, him making his uh, expertise available to the whole community 